Uh, let me come back to pay uh, tributes to Comrade Chrissy Pratt on a day like this, on a day like this, Founders Day. And uh, Chrissy and others have insisted that Kwame Nkrumah is the only founder in Ghana. He cannot share that with anyone, uh, which, is, which is okay, an okay argument. But we are trying to convince them. I'm sure over the few years we have convinced some of them. Uh, now, I'm showing you this documentary to, to uh, do two things. First of all, I'm taking advantage of Founders Day, so programming is loose. I'm going to show you something that typically we will not show. Uh, but this is a, a, a document that is expressing the philosophy of a journalist, myself, appearing in the Socialist Forum, where everyone there is a socialist. And they invited me to come and discuss the history of Ghana. At the time that this Founders Day thing started in 2017, there was a lot of resistance. And I supported Founders Day. I still do support it. So I was invited to the Socialist Forum to discuss the political history of Ghana and the relevance of this so-called Founders Day. Now, I set out my argument by first setting out my political philosophy. Because I was speaking with socialists, I needed to let them know that I used to be socialist, but I'm no longer socialist. This, is, this film is taking us back to the Freedom Center in Kokomlemile, first recorded in 2017. It's eight minutes long. It's Paul Adamotri's political philosophy. Here it is. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When I appeared here, I was not too sure whether I'm worthy of this audience because I am a simple news reporter, and that's what I've been doing for a long time. Um, when Chrissy Pratt called me, um, inviting me to this forum, uh, I didn't know that um, the gathering will be so august, almost intimidating. Al Haji Hudu Yaya, Silvano Stamaklo, Leo Khan, people who have been members of parliament, who have sang the slogans and uh, people who we read about in school but i'll do my best to discharge the duty according to the research that is available to me which i'll share with all of you at the outset though i i have to uh, set out political philosophy and um comrade Chuchu poku when he was calling both of us comrades you know looked at me with a smile wondering whether i i am a comrade i don't know whether i'm qualified to do that but i set out uh, as a socialist, as I believed in the beginning as an undergraduate student, my first encounter with order and life would be with the Catholic Church. And I was being groomed as a mass boy. So in Burma camp where I grew up, I followed Father Kumesi, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kumesi then he was, as one of his favorite mass boys. And the key um, expressions of the Catholic Church is with the communion service. And in the communion service, you will identify the equality of men, the way in which the Catholic Church perceives it. The Father discharges the communion to all men in the same manner. And so equality of men and that kind of socialism sort of um, influenced me at the beginning. Of course, born in the mid-70s to a young army officer, I was uh, around about five to six years old when the 31st December coup occurred. And in those days, uh, I lived in Burma Camp, a place called St. Anthony Lane. And it was very close to the command headquarters and very close to the house of the brigade commander then. His name was Colonel Abana. And so the leaders of the coups struck excitement in a lot of the army officers, the younger army officers, the lieutenants and the captains at that time. Um, I, I was later to learn that the, that excitement that the coup struck in the army officers was because a lot of them were concerned about the attitude of Mr. Riley Poku, who was the Minister of Defense at the time, and it was thought that he did not treat the army officers well. So later on, I understood it. But by this time, my father was a captain, and so um, the names of Aloga Akatapori, Zarayebo, Yen Yen, were names that I had regularly. I associated with them even though I didn't know them and it struck a certain positive impact of something that I didn't quite understand. Later on though, I was to find out that these heroes of the revolution became renegades of the PNDC as it was told that the PNDC did a U-turn um, in its own political philosophy sometime around 1983. Then, as an undergraduate, I was part of those who chanted the slogans of Che Guevara, of Chris Hani. We sang in Kunto with Sizwe. We used to sing Cho Cholozo as if that will bring Mandela out of prison, um, but, but it didn't. We were also buoyed by the maltreatment that the United States meted out, especially to Fidel Castro and, and, and Cuba. 
we were also buoyed in this position when we read about the civil rights movement, about Martin Luther King, about the blessed Elijah Muhammad, who actually begat Malcolm X, and who then recruited Cassius Clay to become a key part of the whole civil rights uh, movement. Cassius, of course, became Ali and ended up as one of the celebrated sportsmen of all time. So being socialist was great. It was the in thing to be. It was fighting university authorities and singing the slogans. That, that was what it was at the time. But then, um, as I proceeded along, um, I read about freedoms and the inalienable rights of men, that these were guaranteed by God. I noticed that our first Republican constitution did not have a clear um, human rights guaranteed charter. I read some of the cases in law school and I realized that arguments had been made in Ghana in the courts that were successfully made against the, what I thought was the inalienable rights of men. Um, then I became born again, so I sort of read also the Bible and I began to accept that the central theme of man is God. I subscribe to the tenets of the God of Abraham who revealed himself as Elohim in Christ. And it seemed to me that center-right political philosophy to discharge the obligations that God had placed upon man in the Garden of Eden became a spontaneous order. I understood capitalism to mean individual initiative to be developed under freedom and the rights for individuals to reap their labor and that the consumer is the most important person in the whole equation. So I also read in those days the epistles of Dr. J.B. Dankwa. I was influenced by Margaret Thatcher and, and the kinds of things she did. I noticed that when England changed to Tony Blair, he pursued almost the same center rightist policies of Margaret Thatcher and he described it as new labor. It occurred to me that, then that perhaps being center rightist maybe uh, is, is the way to go. And then I became quite disappointed with um, what happened in Angola because the battle between the MPLA and UNITA was one of the central themes of conversation and was one of the central themes that divided the center-right people and the center-left people. Eventually the MPLA won the war, but the post-war Angola was more capitalist than anyone could think. In fact, today, Angola and Luanda is the most expensive country to live in. Eduardo Dos Santos's daughter is the, is the richest African woman. And, and so these things sort of strengthened my resolve that perhaps uh, this whole left-wing thing that we had done through the university and the Che Guevara and all of that, just perhaps uh, required a bit more research for us to draw a conclusion. You look at the situation in South Africa today, the people whose slogans we used to chant, um, Cyril Ramaphosa, Tokyo Sexuale, Jacob Zuma, if you look at the way in which they conduct affairs, it's very, very far from the letter of socialism. And these matters sort of strengthen the resolve that perhaps, perhaps, we have to have another look at this philosophy that we are acquainted with. Uh, not that Cyril is doing anything wrong, but in terms of the letter of socialism that was preached widely in those days, and if you look at what has happening now, it may well be that they had also changed the philosophy, as indeed did the PNDC in 1983, which set out also as a socialist group. Then I looked at President Kufo when he took office in 2001, and since the time of Kwame Nkrumah, the record will indicate that no other president has achieved such important social interventions as President Kufour, who should normally be a center-right person, did. And, and sort of all of that influenced me. So I'm, I'm just saying this at the outset so that um, the distinguished audience will know where I have come from and, and where I have uh, struggled towards. So that uh, that will definitely influence the kinds of things I said. And I had said that I read the Pilsers of Dan Kwai and I read it thoroughly. And I have also read Dr. Nkrumah, who's very distinguished, uh, but perhaps that informs uh, the kinds of things that I'll be saying.